Hello! Today we're going to be taking a look at building a simple Java GUI from the ground up using the Java library, the Java Swing library, and making it so we can actually have an application we can run like an actual, more like application, not just the command line, so we can see and do some cool stuff. Um, I'm going to be using the model view controller architecture for putting this together, and we're going to be using that so we can separate the code out into the piles of code. So the thing that it needs to do is all that it does. So this is the idea that we're trying to make sure that the things only do what they need to do as we write the code. So keep that in mind as we go through this. That's what we're going for to actually build that process to start. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, as you can see right here, I've got my project started over here in Eclipse and my project navigator. I've got nothing in my code yet because I want to get started just from the uh, very beginning. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our source folder, and in our source folder we make two packages. We're going to make our controller package and our view package. So those are the first two we want to start off with so we can make sure we have something ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do, right click, and new, and then package. And we're going to call this demo, or GUI, hmm. We're going to go ahead and call this demo.controller because it's a demo and that's what we're working with. And the controller package because this is in charge of controlling the actual application. So demo.controller. Again, notice that when I'm working with packages, we're using lowercase letters only separated by dots to indicate the structure of what we're working for a package a structure. And I hit finish, and that puts in a demo.controller package right there. Inside the demo controller, we're going to go ahead and add a new class. And the first class we're going to make is our controller class. And so our controller is the one that's in charge of passing information around, is the one that will be sending information back and forth, and its job is to be the go-between anything we're working with inside the project. So the controller can see the model, and the controller can see the view. However, the model and view, they can't see each other at all. And so that's what we're going to use as our basis for that. So my controller, I'm going to start that off, and so it creates a public class controller right here in the package demo.controller. If you're not used to using multiple packages, the package always has to be that first line of code. So just as an FYI, that's why that's there. Inside my controller package, I always start off with a constructor. So we have a public and controller with nothing inside it and squigs, and then I'm going to make a public void start because that is my default method I always make for every one of my projects I do in class to have a starting project here. So public void start. And it has no parameters and it takes open set of squigs right there. We save that, we're good. If you're using GitHub, this is a great time to commit because this way it's like, oh, I've got my first project started. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my runner. The runner is the thing that all it does is starts the project. So I'll go ahead and go to class, make a new class again. This is the runner. And all that my runner does is it simply has public static void main it. That's it. That's all it does. And in the parens, we get string, array, args. You don't need to worry about anything of that because that doesn't matter at all for what we're working with. So just ignore it. We just start it up and run. The only thing we have inside my runner every single time is the same exact uh, two lines of code. That way I don't have to worry about ever troubleshooting my code in my runner because my runner is always the same thing every time makes it so I don't have to worry about anything. And again, the job of a runner, all it's designed to do is simply start the project, nothing else. And so that makes it really simple and easy to keep track. So I have a controller, app, excuse me, app, equals new controller, parens semicolon, and app.start. So again, this is the project I use every single time, so I don't have to worry about doing anything special. My runner is totally done. I don't have to do anything else. I can close it. It's out of the way. It doesn't need to do anything. So now I've got my controller and my runner started. Now let's go ahead and let's go to the other side of the group. Let's take a look at making the actual view, the thing we're going to use to actually show up on the screen. Now when we talk about a view, we've got two parts we have to look at. The first part we have to talk about is the actual frame that holds it in place. And then there's the panel, a little piece of glass right here, like in my glasses itself, that we actually put things in and do with the GUI interaction. So the frame itself is going to be the most basic part. It doesn't do a lot actually on its own, but it holds it in place. And then the panel is where that work happens. So we're going to go ahead and first make our package for this. And so I'm going to have the same name as the prefix part, demo, but my sub package will be view. So demo.view is how I'll do that. So right click demo, go to new, and go to package. And again, lowercase, demo.view is what I name it. I hit finish. And so you can see right here, I have my demo controller and my demo view. I'm going to close that out right there. In the demo view, I'm going to first make my frame class and get the stub for that ready so it's available for us. So right click right here, go to new, go to class. And we're going to call this the uh, demo frame because, well, that's what it is. And so I have my public class demo frame. And so my demo frame right now just exists as a class. It doesn't do anything. It's boring. But we're going to make it so it can do some cool stuff. In order to do that, however, we have to add imports so we can see what goes beyond it. And so what we do is we're going to use the idea of inheritance, and we're going to inherit from JFrame. JFrame is the built-in class that allows us to hold things inside Java's Swing library, how we can do GUI stuff with that. We're also going to have an import for our controller because we use that to send a reference to our existing controller so we can send information back and forth from here to there. So let's go ahead and add those first two imports to get that done, and then we'll go to the next step. So import javax.swing.jframe, 
we need that for the GUI component. And then import demo.controller.controller. So we have those two references right there. So those are the first two parts we need to do. The next thing we do is we actually need to make it so we can build the frame itself and make it so it is a frame. We do that by first adding to the, um, <clears throat> We do that by first by adding to our class header. We told it it's going to extend JFrame so it can actually use the JFrame library. So we do extends and then JFrame. And now our demo frame knows exactly how to be a JFrame. Cool stuff. Great thing on inheritance. Check out my inheritance videos for more information on how to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a data member for our controller. We don't use it in this project, but it might be available for us in other projects. So this is just me building ahead just in case I need to use it later on. So I have a private controller and I give it the really boring name of app. I know it's crazy, really easy to deal with. And then we make our constructor for this. And so it's a public demo frame. And it takes as a parameter, a controller reference because that way we can send the reference to our existing controller, only one of them. So we have that, so we have just one controller that we use to send back information back and forth and have that reference for that model view controller architecture that we've seen in some of my other videos. So it takes a controller reference and I use the really boring name of app again as the primary because that way it makes it really easy to have that happen. Now I've got my constructor started. Now because this class extends JFrame, I have to do one thing first. The first line of any class that extends a class, the first line of the constructor should be, and must be in the cases of we're having parameter based ones, a call to super. And so we do that by default. We just put a call to super right here. And that calls the parent class constructor by default. The next thing we're gonna do is initialize our data member by using the parameter. So this.app will equal app. So I use the this dot keyword so I can talk about the current one and this.app equals app. So I assign the parameter to the data member. Great way to take that uh, care of that. So that just simply creates a thing right there. Now if I simply make that JFrame and put it right here, nothing's gonna happen because I made a JFrame but it doesn't do anything. A JFrame needs to have some information attached to it. So we're gonna make a helper method that can take care of all those pieces for us. So I'm gonna go right here, make a private void setup frame takes no parameters and open squig the last line of the method is the first one i write because it's one that's required for us to even work at all and so the last line of setup frame needs to be a call to set visible true if you don't have a call to set visible true the app won't even run it'll just simply be like oh you want a gui but you're not allocating anything for it we'll turn it off so the last line of the method needs to be this dot set visible and we pass it true that means it's going to actually be there the next couple lines we have to put in there we're going to do this dot set size and I use this as my default size for basically everything 800 by 600 because, well, I've got big monitors and I can use them. However, if you wanna make it smaller, that's great. If you wanna make it bigger, also great. If you wanna make it so it's full screen, take a look at one of my other videos and I'll give you a demonstration how to do that too. So this dot set size, 800 by 600. This dot set resizable. I'm gonna say that um, true for this time. Usually it goes to false. And then this dot set title. And we're gonna give it a title. My first window exclamation points because hey we might as well have fun now this method of course it has the yellow and underline of uselessness because i haven't done anything with it yet oh it's private i haven't called it so the last line of my constructor needs to be a call to my helper method so we'll then do that code attached to it again we do this because we want to have the constructor have the job of initializing all its data members and then call any associated helper methods once it's done doing the initialization and that's exactly what we're going to do right here so this dot setup frame we call that method right there. And so now I've got my lovely frame started. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens when I can use this frame in my controller. So I go back to my controller class and my controller now needs to know that my frame exists. So also I have to go up here to my import section and in my imports I add an import for demo.view.demo frame. Okay, great, wonderful. Make a data member right here, private demo frame. And I give it the really creative name frame. I know, I'm boring, but that's okay. Now, in order to initialize this, remember we had over here in the demo frames constructor, it takes a controller as a parameter. And so in the controller, if I want to send a reference to myself, I have to pass it the parameter of this because this is talking about myself. So I can send it as a parameter to any method call that needs it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that this dot frame equals new and then a demo frame, not S demo, excuse me, demo frame. And I pass it this as a parameter. So that means it's gonna go off and it's gonna go send my reference to myself over to my frame so I can see it on screen. So let's go ahead and save this and run it really quick so we can get the first basic part right here. I hit play and I grab my first window. This is amazing, this is the best app ever. I can't do anything, I know. 
Well, let's go ahead and let's actually put a panel inside that window so we can do something with it and then we can see what happens from there and we'll check that out in our Verti videos as we go along. So let's go ahead and stop this video right here and we'll switch to going how we can make that have a panel going that for our next video. Check it out. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.